Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. How the world is changing, and it's really changing these days. You have to keep track of so many things. Um, what happens after the hostage deal? I mean, we have enough issues while it's going on, but what happens after the hostage deal? It's really real time, isn't it? Um, and who is pleased with that deal? Who will benefit by that deal? How will the world change by virtue of that deal? With Rup Mati, Dr. Rup, Rup Mati Khandakar joins us from New York. Welcome to the show, Rup Mati. Aloha, Jay, and it's lovely to be here with you. And we are speaking about this issue, which is so important in history, present, you know, and the future. So uh, it's a deal which will have a lot of repercussions for future. Yeah, let's talk, let's talk about where we are. So. We're just about finished with the four days originally agreed. Uh, there were there was a hiccup there about a delay a couple of days ago, and uh, lots of um, you know um, commentary about whether the uh, Hamas side breached the agreement or not, and whether their excuse for delaying it eight hours while the Israelis stood around in, in further terror waiting for them, um, and what that really meant, whether that was a power play or legitimate. Um, and, uh, you know, what, what the numbers game is, you know, they started out with 240 hostages. They've given some back, only one American. Um, there are nine Americans, and I don't know if these numbers are ultimately accurate or not. And uh, what is this two-day two extension uh, that we heard about? Uh, what does that mean? Um, how many will be transferred? How many are left? And with the stress on how many are left, uh, have, have these... Um, have these guys uh, complied? How has the power shifted? Some commentators feel that Qatar, um, because of that delay, the power shifted away from them into Egypt, and Egypt was the uh, you know the cornerstone of making this happen. Uh, then you get strange things like uh, the high five that some is Israeli. Uh, excuse me, the high five that that some Hamas guy. Uh, gave to the uh, hostages that were being released a couple of days ago. What does that mean? Where does the st the, the Stockholm syndrome fall in all this? And what are we going to hear from the hostages? Uh, it's, it's good that we know. It's good that the Israelis will make that public. Um, but it's dangerous for the remaining hostages, isn't it? So tell us the status. Tell us what the implications are at the present moment. Jay, now this entire halabulu about the hostage situation was, you know, because Israel was getting back hostages, but Palestine was getting back prisoners, prisoners accused of, you know, doing illegal things. There's a big difference. It's not a swap of hostages. It's a swap of people, civilians who were picked up from their houses and, you know, legitimate uh, uh, accused prisoners who have harmed Israel and who are indoctrinated to hurt Israel in every which way. Now, Jay, I don't know how many people know about uh, there was that the group of uh, 39, which was released in exchange of 13 in the first one. It had one prisoner known as, she was known as Isra Jabibi, you know, uh, Jabis. And she was the one who was accused when she was 31 to take a, her cylinder detonated at an Israeli checkpoint because they, pin, they picked her up for uh, having a car bomb. She was driving into Israel to have a suicide bombing uh, incident. Now, these are not small things. Jay. They're welcoming them as heroes and everything. But you see, the mindset is not um, that of a hostage. They were not troubled. They were accused of crimes taken in. Now, um, Palestine was pushing for a one um, prisoner, your hostages versus our entire 6,000 prisoners. That was muted. We have to understand that there is a lot of domestic pressure on Mr. Netanyahu. And see, in, in a prisoner, in a hostage situation, the stronger your side is, the stronger you can deal with them. Now, every day of this uh, ordeal is helping Hamas to regroup, to reorder. Now, every day that they were extending, they had promised that 10 Israeli hostages will be released. And in exchange, it's a ratio of three to one that they have agreed upon that 30 will be released for Palestine. 30 prisoners will be released for Palestine. But Jay, we have to see that this is uh, Hamas trying to regroup, reorder, because the onslaught 
or the retaliation was such that Hamas has been hurt. And that hurt is uh, so evident and so necessary because if they regroup, there is an impending attack. There is no denial about this, that the future holds an impending attack more deadlier than this one if Hamas regroups and re-strengthens. Now, northern Gaza, the tunnels have been destroyed. The hostage situation is progressing. The truce is going on. But I, I, I hope the IDF and uh, Netanyahu are firm on their mission to destroy Hamas and clean Gaza. Because Gaza was allowed to function as a proper city with hospitals, schools, women, children, everything. <clears throat> but these prisoners who are being swapped are ones who have entered Israeli territory and harmed. And the, the hostages that we are swapping in are civilians who have been picked up from their home. And uh, Jay, which country in the world has to tolerate toddlers to be uh, kept as hostages for over 48 days? 38 days. You know, it's, it's, a, it's unimaginable to talk about humanity if you don't think about the kids. Which country has to uh, wait and, you know, give in to demands when six antagonistic uh, nations are waiting to pounce on that country? Yeah, we're really at an inflection point here. There's so many factors and so many players involved on the stage, and it's hard to say um, what will prevail, uh, well, w whether this will be uh, in accordance with the agreement or an extension of the agreement or not. But even the agreement, you know, as you point out, not that great for Israel. Um, no. they're, they're only getting a, a fraction of the hostages back. Um, only one American so far. There are nine unaccounted Americans. And I wonder, I have some questions. I don't know if you've been able to, you know, delve into it that deeply in the short amount of time we've had to follow this. But how are the hostages who are being returned selected from the 240 or now remaining 180 hostages? How is that selection process? You know, during World War II and the Holocaust, there was this thing about selection in Germany. And uh, it was very painful um, that the, the, the selection would be completely irrational and, and made only to terrify you and to give you the dilemma of choosing your own fate in some way. Uh, but now we have another selection process. How are the hostages who are being returned selected? You know? Yeah, Jay, like it, would, it was, uh, firstly, Israel put its foot down upon the fact that no murderers or, uh, you know, uh, men would be released. So they had to come to a common point and they decided on women and elderly people. So now amongst these hostages, they had children and their mothers. So they picked up these, I think, uh, it's just 13 of them, but they have been randomly picked and uh, the elderly who have been uh, picked up for this. But Jay, let me point out to you that the video that Hamas made when they are returning the hostages, it is propaganda. It is a propaganda video. They are telling the hostages to wave at, back at them. Keep waving, they say. Another one uh, taps on the Hamas soldier and tells him, put your hand and show that you're caring, you know. So this is propaganda video. It is not uh, to show how, hum how much Hamas cares for hostages. It's hostage and terrorist. Nobody's making that clear. It is not uh, loving... Uh, citizens who are uh, sending uh, off, uh, giving a farewell to uh, people who they have rescued. Terrorists are sending back people they had captured. And the propaganda video shows the sensitive side of Hamas. So, I mean, give me a break. Uh, it is <laughs> using virtual reality for uh, uh, a whole new cause. Do we, do we know how they were treated? Have, have any of the released hostages been able to say as uh, you know, they obviously have to be debriefed and all by the Israelis. But do we know yet exactly what kind of situation they had while they were being held? Jay, firstly, it came out from all that they were held in a tunnel. It was uh, in tunnels that they were kept in. And as the IDF is going into these tunnels, they're running out of hiding spaces too. So that is one of the reasons why they've come to this hostage situation. And the hostages were captured for this very reason, to terrorize Israel 
into domestic pressure, into you know a chaos. And when they regroup, uh, they know what they are targeting. Jay. See, for them, the end goal is death, and they martyrdom is for them is a stage of achievement. And for that, it is scary to deal with these hostages because they they don't care about their own lives. They can easily, uh, you know, wipe out these hostages. And we don't know the numbers. We don't know the people who are there just in tunnels. And like you spoke about the Stockholm Syndrome, that they will not remember anything. Because there's so much of pressure. There is so much of terrorization of the mind. And toddlers waiting as hostages, Jay. I mean, it's never happened in the world in this number, in this much of time, and with so much of opposition that Israel has to face. They are the rescuers, and they are being treated as you know oppressors. So that is absolutely wrong. Yeah, that's incredible. I want to ask you about that. But first, I, um, you know, I, I want to ask you about the um, propaganda war. So you <clears throat> you have uh, on the one hand uh, the return of the hostages, or some of them, just some of them, um, and um, you know that sort of uh, emphasizes the fact that there were hostages being kept uh, against their will, and that they're you know, women and children, and, and poor Abigail, Abigail Eaton, I think her name was, <clears throat> the young American, yes. the young American Israeli girl had just turned four a few days ago. Yes. So when you have that, um, you have, you have a, a two, two strains working against each other. One, you can say that, you can say, and you did say that uh, Hamas gets propaganda points because it makes videos and it tries to manipulate the propaganda, just as it has from day one. Um, uh, but, you know, this also shows that hostages were kept. And those who would deny and that yes. October 7th never happened, you know, they can't really deny it. This is living proof that it happened. Um, so what you, what you have is two strains. Uh, one is uh, the, the propaganda war by Hamas, and the other is uh, the confirmation of the tunnels, the confirmation that the hostages were taken, women and children who were completely, as you said, completely innocent. Who wins the, you know, that propaganda war? Who comes out ahead in terms of world opinion? Uh, can you say, or is it, is it, you know, uh, it's just it, uh, the same as it was? Yeah, the see, Jay, uh, white is white and black is black. We have no gray area when it comes to terrorism. And pseudo liberals will say, wow, it's a swap of hostages. And they will keep on repeating it that, you know, uh, uh, both sides have benefited from this. But Israel is trying to negotiate for lives. And, uh, you know, Jay, when these people, prisoners of uh, war, uh, prisoners were released, Palestine prisoners were released, out of those 300, majority of them, 70% are from the West Bank. And when they returned back, they were given heroes' welcomes. If you've seen the videos uh, on the back, you know, they're... They are prisoners and they have done things which are wrong, which are going against a sovereign state, which are going against a democratic government. Now, this uh, kind of uh, crime that they have done and they've been sentenced to eight years. There was one other lady, uh, Nurhan Awad. She was 17 years old. She was on a stabbing spree uh, on the street, uh, stabbing Israeli civilians. Uh, and her brother was killed and she was sentenced for eight years. So when you're stabbing civilians in a street, you are a criminal. I mean, it's logic. Yeah. And well, the thing is that uh, you, it's it's uh, it's hard to deny that these yes. people will go back, they go back to Gaza, they'll go back to Hamas, and you say there were celebrations on the street. Those celebrations, yes. I'm sure, were not limited to Hamas people. Uh, oh. They were all the Palestinian crowd, the same crowd that watched the naked. Uh, Jewish yep. uh, women being paraded through the streets on October 7th, October 8th. But now, now they go back, and you know they're going to join Hamas again. They're heroes yes. to Hamas. They're going to do more terror, more stabbings, more attempted bombings, whatever it is. And uh, it's really regrettable that they're back into, into you know, the same things they were doing before, and they will kill people. They will kill people. You know that that's their life mission and that they will be used for that. Hamas now has, you know, people that will be great resources for them. Uh, I don't know what, how you deal with that. I mean, to me, if they're caught again, even attempting this sort of thing, 
uh, they have to get thrown in the darkest hole forever or killed um, because they are sworn terrorists. And to give sworn terrorists back, you know, a lot of the terrorists in Hamas today were, yep. um, you know, were released released from Israeli prisons for prior terror. So it's very regrettable that uh, it's three to one ratio. It's very regrettable that these are not innocent people. They're criminals. They're terrorist criminals. Uh, troubled by that. Um, anyway, so is there, what can Israel do about it? They are indoctrinated minds, uh, Jay. And when they are indoctrinated to kill and to get killed, uh, that is the ultimate kind of uh, uh, level that they achieve. And uh, Jay, when they're giving a hero's welcome, they think their struggle in Israel has made them so tough. Be sure each one is going to come out as a nuisance and menace for Israeli society. Yeah. I mean, uh, giving up these people outside is as good as, you know, they're not... See, women and children released from the Palestine side were convicted criminals. Hostages released from, uh, of Israel were just taken hostage because they're Israelis. There is no crime committed. They were in their houses. They were doing their daily work. And they have been picked up. Veterans, women, children, men, other uh, nationals. This is their uh, blackmailing tactic. This is their uh, pressure tactic on trying to bring a democracy to its knees. But this is temporary, Jay. And um, uh, domestic pressure as well as international uh, perception of Israel. It's fashionable to be anti-Semitic. Why? Because uh, you just want to, uh, you know, they have these hundreds of videos showing their pity and uh, plight, but Israelis are hiding and they don't want to go through that again and again. So uh, that is allowed. I mean, it keeps on uh, going to such a place that we have to understand that this doesn't work. You know, so we have the propaganda war and you and I can evaluate how it's going or should be going, you know, the information that's now flooded. This is a raw meat situation, you know. Uh, a week or two ago, the raw meat that the press was picking up was uh, uh, the, uh, you know, the claims of Hamas that thousands of people were being killed and maimed and wounded in the hospitals and all that, you know, tear your heart out kind of raw meat yeah. stories. And the press focused on that, and they didn't yeah. talk about the massacre. And I, I find that, you know, uh, I find that... Um, uh, awful that the press has given us only the raw meat that shows up on a given day and and uh, the kind of raw meat that will interest people from a schadenfreude point of view but yes. but now we have the hostages coming back we have we have a different different playing field somehow because they came back and because of the swap that you described and all so the question is how will this how will this 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 um the hostage deal affect public opinion, uh, and mostly, I, I think I'm asking about the U.S. About all those college campus kids uh, and faculty uh, that have made light of the massacre or ignored it or ripped posters of the hostages off the wall, um, and how they have protests favoring Hamas uh, and against the Israelis and all that. Will the, these events of the last few days and the next few days, will these events um, change uh, the sensibilities of all the pro-Hamas protesters in this country? CJ, the propaganda videos of Hamas were fodder for these pseudo-liberals. They loved it. They lapped it up. I mean, they, they, were, they were getting thrilled with this kind of, you know, uh, um, children massacred, this, that, but they did not, they conveniently put the terrorist attack on Israel on a backstage. You know, when uh, um, a person does not admit what is right, what is wrong, there is a lot of confusion in that space. And that was what was happening. And just as the Palestine kids were indoctrinated to hate Israel, you have American kids indoctrinated to see that Israel is committing atrocities. No, Israel is trying to save its own life. It is in self-defense that all this goes on. So many propaganda videos, Jay, you find the same actor doing different, different things. They're lying in a, a white uh, uh, coffin sheet and peeking out of it. 
the Hamas, uh, the, uh, Hamas terrorists who are bringing back the hostages are being told to tap on their back, to hold them, to pick them up and put them into ambulances. Were they this caring when they were shooting down people in their houses? Were they this caring when, you know, there were families who were hugging themselves when they were being shot? This is the kind of, uh, uh, you know, contradiction that they show. And people think it's a stage and it's a show performance and take it up. Israel will keep this truce going on and, you know, there will be negotiations till the hostages are there. But, Jay, this time, because of the intensity of October 7 and the possibility of a future attack, this time it will be different, Jay. This time there will not be a negotiation up to eternity. There will be a negotiation up to Israel's patience. And after that, without that, with that, any circumstance, <clears throat> Hamas will be eliminated. And that is the bottom line in this war. I hope so. But let's look, let's look at the remaining 180. <clears throat> there are still 180 plus one or two uh, in yeah. uh, hostages. And, um, you know, as you go down, so the, now they talk about a two-week extension of the hostage deal. Uh, for yes. more hostages, but that doesn't take you anywhere near 180. Uh, there's still, you know, a huge number of hostages being held, theoretically. I, I believe that some of them have already been killed. Some some of them were wounded and have died. Some of them have been lost. Yes. Uh, yeah. Lost in the tunnels. There was one story of a, um, a, a hostage who was with her mother. And, um, and part of the deal, by the way, is that Hamas was not going to separate families, but they did separate this family. The young child was uh, returned, but the mother disappeared. She was not returned. And uh, they got some kind of sad sack uh, response. The ha Hamas guy said, we couldn't find her. Really couldn't find her? She was with her daughter for you know, 50 yeah. days, but now you couldn't find her? What kind of... Anyway, I, and I believe that terrible things have happened to some of the 180. The question I put yeah. to you, though, is, and this is a really interesting question, is, you know, as we go down the track here, as we get, you know, groups, small groups of hostages for various possible extensions of the, of the hostage deal, does it get easier? Does it get harder? Will Hamas twist further? Will the Israeli response and the response of the Jewish community in, you know, the United States to Biden, what will they do as we get, you know, with a smaller number um, of hostages? It seems to me that is more excruciating yet, because it means these people have had to wait. And yes. we don't know. We don't know the situation. And we don't know if they're alive. And and so it's it's actually more painful going forward. Your thoughts? Yeah, Jay, uh, point on you are. And uh, it is difficult to understand the mindset of Hamas in this. And they want to keep this blackmailing and this pressure on Israelis for a longer time. But that, like you said, we don't know the whereabouts or the well-being of these hostages. And uh, when it comes down, you know, they have offered that you we send, we send all the hostages, you send all the 6,000 prisoners back. That was the main deal, but Israel is talking tough this time. 6,000 of them back on the street, indoctrinated, and under after serving in Israeli camps, they're going to be stronger and harder to uh, bring down. And this kind of uh, uh, setup that they are making, it is going to only last and play out till resources are, uh, you know, not exhausted, but till Israel also regroups. Now, this time it's when Hamas is regrouping, even IDF is regrouping. So it's going to be a head-on thing. And for US, <clears throat> Israel is not only an ally, it is geostrategically one of the most important democracies in the world for anybody, for any country. If you don't see Israel as a, a fully successful Middle Eastern democracy, you are not, you're missing the point. Hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. So, you know, I think um, uh, Netanyahu has been out in the field. He's he put on his flak jacket and uh, he's been among the troops in, in Gaza. And the, uh, you know, the troops are still there in Gaza. 
I think they're they're doing maintenance things, as you say. They may be they're doing regrouping on their yeah. own. Well, one thing troubles me about the deal, though, the the deal said that uh, the Israelis could not fly drones during the truce. I said, why not? Why not? And yeah. what you know, this is only surveillance is all it is. I don't know why Hamas insisted on that. But anyway, uh, they're down there, and um, he certainly wants them to regroup. And and he keeps saying, and I, I, I believe from him, it's a it's a sincere statement. He wants to begin, you know, the attack, the Israeli attack on Hamas immediately after this this prisoner swap thing is over. So yes. my question is, you know, right now we're in a lull. As, as I meant when I when I started you know, introducing the subject. We're in a lull. We don't know where the inflection point will really go. Uh, let me let me offer, too, that um, it ain't going to be that easy for yes. Netanyahu and, his, and the IDF to say, OK, boys, uh, let's go back in now, um, yeah. you know, because everybody's had the sweet taste of peace for a few days. Uh, query what what are his issues what are his prospects uh, what are you know what is likely to happen um at the end of the truce period and and he tells them um okay as you were let's go in and let's let's finish the job what kind of reaction is he going to get from his own people that is the idf and the people in in israel and from the you know the americans and others who are seeking a, a permanent peace what kind of reaction is it? can he really mount the, the campaign again? Yeah, yeah, Jay, we must we may not agree with his domestic policies, I've told you before, but he's a soldier of his side. And when he when a prime minister or when the head of the nation goes to his troops, like they do, they lead from the front. They give the morale that to the soldiers that you know you have to keep going and Israel has to win. So that kind of motivation is not a small thing, Jay. It must seem like a visit or something, but it's a morale for soldiers to fight for the country, to defend the country. In this case, in this issue, in the October 7 uh, attack, Israel is defending itself. Now, regrouping is very important. As much as Hamas thinks it's for them, it is also important for Israel because the Reiki has been done. First thing first, the northern part of Gaza which was the most densely populated, the uh, uh, Gaza City and, you know, uh, those areas which were densely with the tunnels were ones which were bombarded and they were finished. The tunnels which were important were done. Now, this break is good for Israel also. And regrouping, Jay, we have no choice. There is no choice in regrouping and re-going inside because this was a place, you know, <clears throat> it could easily have been if these... Uh, maniacs had a nuclear weapon. They were not responsible. Uh, people, they had uh, drones, uh, suicide drones, they've used it. They had paragliders, they used it. They had guns, they used it. Just imagine they have a weapon of mass destruction. Can you trust these people with them? So it, they can never go beyond basic living. <laughs> I mean, it is so uh, uh, downright uh, straightforward to say that development does not suit mental madness <laughs> so, so i mean they, they deserve to start from the beginning start from scratch live your basic life and uh, if you go to you know this extent that you heard the development or existence of another nation they did deserve it <laughs> I mean, i'm going all out on this <laughs> Well, you know what? What happens uh, if there is a permanent truce, I, I uh, or a long-term truce? I mean, it's just, n n every war has got to come to an end somehow. It's got to be resolved somehow. Win, lose, or draw, it's got to be resolved. So, at the end of that time, you know, I think Israel will be different. Uh, there'll be those who would campaign for uh, removing Netanyahu for sure. Um, yes. There would be those players, uh, you know, those. Those countries that have attacked Israel that will keep on attacking Israel, even if the thing with Gaza is resolved, even the thing with the West Bank is resolved, they'll be doing it again. And uh, yes. and finally, you know, the, the Joe, Joe Biden is is going to try to, um, you know, stay in office here, and um, he's he's going to try to be a hero, which he's tried hard to do. Um, but query, where does he come out at the end? The Republicans yes. attack him for. Um, not not being aggressive enough to deal with the, uh, you know, Hamas. So let's assume for a moment, though, 
mm -hmm. um, that we do have a long-term truce here because it's got to be heading ultimately to that, whether there is a Hamas or isn't a Hamas. Uh, how can Israel prevent this from ever happening again? Uh, obviously, one thing is to remove and eliminate Hamas and the people around Hamas, you know, who could easily join some other terror organization, by the way. Exactly. If not, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yes, Jay, yes, this is so right, because now there are terror cells in Europe which are waiting and watching this game. How is it playing out? Are the hostages effective enough? You know, this game is going to move to Europe. And uh, um, luckily for Israel, whether Republican or Democratic, America remains ally, strong, steadfast friend. That is, uh, um, you know, that is non-questionable and that is good. But uh, this terror cells which will operate in Israel, now Gaza will be a restricted territory. It will not be the same again. They will not be allowed to come and settle down again because the proximity that they had, the access that they had to Israel on an early morning of a holiday was uh, when it was can never be negotiated again. So that kind of uh, keeping away is going to be done. Now, West Bank is the place where they will be concentrated on. And these prisoners were... Gaza, it's out of the question that it will be the same again and they will be allowed to move back in, relocate, like Saudi promised that they would come to develop Gaza again. But I don't think that's the point. And Gaza will forever remain a restricted, forbidden territory for all now. And uh, it's uh, pseudo-liberals, like we said, they can never be pleased. They will keep on harping about it. And you cannot wait for them to act. You cannot please them. So it's better to defend and act for yourself. And that's exactly what Israel did. And Israel has this win-lose game, draw game that we talked about, Jay. Israel has played the tolerant person. Israel has uh, always played to survive. If Israel was the one harming and going and attacking their territories, we would have discussed this issue in a very different way. Mm -hmm. But like you always say, it's an existential uh, war that Israel is fighting. Well, Israel has some tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of the land in the Palestinian and Arab world. It's really amazing how people connect uh, you know, all of this to a question of land. It isn't a question of land. It's a question of allowing allowing a Jewish state to exist. That's what it is. It's ideology. But anyway, I wanted to I wanted to ask you though, um, you know, in the past, in times of relative peace, um, Hamas has been throwing rockets into southern Israel um, forever. You know, every day, and the sirens go off, and people, you know, hide, and the Israelis hide so they won't be, you know, injured or killed by these rockets that come in. Just a reminder that Hamas, Hamas is there, or that Hamas, uh, you know, uh, it does its thing. So if I were the new Israel, call it the post truce Israel, I wouldn't allow one single rocket. In other words, it's just me now, but if, if I saw on a given day that Hamas, in a time of truce, was firing rockets into southern Israel, I would let them have it. Yes. I, I would, for every rocket, I would blow up a building uh, yeah. and so forth. And I wouldn't be too concerned about who was hurt because they initiated the attack. Um, exactly. And I would also, I'm sad to say, I would also uh, tell the Israelis they cannot have kibbutzim on the border. That's much yeah. too dangerous going forward. We've had the threat already um, that yes. Hamas would try this again. And if not Hamas, somebody else. Your, your thoughts about the new Israeli defense, um, you know, defense configuration. New Israel is now hurt, smarter, and more effective, Jay, in dealing with this because they have learned to just care nothing about other people when their own lives are at stake. They are dealing with proper terrorists. I told you, if Israel puts down the arms, there will be no Israel. But if Palestine puts down the arms, there is peace. We have always seen that whatever aid used to come into Palestine never was used for hospitals, schools. It was used for building tunnels and underground city, which had missiles to target Israel. So when your entire fund is going, diverting towards eliminating a nation, wiping it off the face of the earth, that nation is going to fight to survive. It, I mean, 100 times Israel has given the other cheek to be slapped. But I don't think it's effective for people who will stab you in the stomach when you're giving your cheek to be slapped. 
So <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Well, the toughest and most immediate question to me is what happens is the number of hostages is reduced. Because I fear that, you know, getting to zero hostages, as I said before, will be very difficult and painful. And, of course, that means painful for the Israelis. Because what do you do? You know, this is like the story of Sodom. Uh, what do you do if there's only one left? What do you do? Um, do, you, do, you keep on, do you keep on waiting? Uh, do, you, do you respond to all those families? In this case, it wouldn't be as many. Um, and, uh, and keep on, you know, uh, extending the ceasefire? Or do you say, well, we're just going to have to write them off. Uh, we have to go in now. We can't wait anymore. Because it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, a war of attrition, and uh, they're going to do their propaganda thing, and they're going to keep, you know, delaying the ultimate release of the last hostages as long as they can to use them like um, as strategical tools. So my question to you, I, I don't know, there's no answer here, but I think this question is and will be raised going forward. What, what does Israel do? Um, as the number of hostages gets released, but it doesn't get released to zero. Yeah. CJ, history will never blame Israel because Israel is a country which has negotiated for the remains of an Israeli soldier with the swap of prisoners of Palestine. Remains of a soldier. So they are ready to, you know, bring, you know, bow down to such a level that they give uh, their prisoners for just a body. And today, uh, they are negotiating for the hostages because they care. And this kind of care can never be underestimated for weakness. And when you uh, think that that is weakness, that is the point that Israel will have to, you know, it will. And it, it has no choice in this because they have left us no choice. They have come and attacked a terrorist attack so brutal. Never in the history has any terrorist attack been so direct so head on and so much into each house so when you're not protected in your house how safe is tomorrow jay so idf israel netanyahu and any person at the top of the seat in israel will fight for israel to exist jay. that is true you know i have a i have a friend a uh, long time friend who is a psychologist uh, an Israeli psychologist. And, you know, over the years, there have been all these attacks on the kibbutzim. And uh, she gives, you know, she gives comfort to the families and the individuals who have been affected by these, in, in the kibbutzim and elsewhere, have been affected by these attacks. And I keep thinking, can you imagine what her, yes. job, what her job is like now? children whose parents were killed on top of them, who bled all over them, uh, families completely ripped apart, uh, the most horrendous psychological trauma you could ever, ever, ever imagine. I don't think we hear enough about that. I imagine yes. that the people who, who provide the mental health services that she provides must be completely overtime right now. Yep trying to save these people from going into a PTSD kind of, you know, total funk over what happened. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, Jay. I mean, mental, mental health, which we hear the, the in issue, which is spoken on global stage, you know, mental health of people who have, uh, who have been part of the terrorist attack, who are living in Israel today, will think about tomorrow, the mental health of people who have seen bodies being splattered when they did not expect it in their own homes. Music festival, Jay. They're enjoying the music. Innocent people are enjoying a concert. You see terror, uh, you know, militants come in and take you away. You know, um, mistreatment of women. This is kind of the mental trauma. There is mental health is gone for a whole new toss. It is traumatic. It is distressing. And it is savage uh, behavior that, you know, okay, if it was something that it was done with and finished and it will never happen again, that would have also been accepted. But something which is an impending dagger on your uh, neck all the time is uh, more traumatic. And families which were ripped apart, like you said, they didn't need to be do that. 
they really did not need to bring in this terrorist attack. Yeah, that's the one thing that I, I don't think we understand yet, and the press doesn't understand it either, um, that it's not a matter of just returning the hostages. Yes. And, 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 and uh, you know, Biden said uh, Abigail, he wanted to hug her. Okay, good. But, but the fact is she needs a lot of hugging, uh, and maybe all the but hugging in the world won't really help her. And, and uh, this leaves a, you know, a psychological stain on the families of the hostages, the hostages themselves, and on the state of Israel and everyone in Israel. Uh, yes. the, these, you know, these psychological ramifications will last for years and years, you know, like the Holocaust itself will last yes. for years and years. People will remember they will be, you know, injured by it for years. Um, sorry, Rupmati, but we're out of time. Uh, <laughs> I always <laughs> enjoy discussions, and I really appreciate your reporting about things and your, uh, you know, exchanging views with me. Yes, I hope to see you again soon. Always, Jay. I'm always waiting for you. Aloha. Aloha.